My name is Mr. Shenroma. We are continuing with the revision of questions. And as I said before, we are dealing with geometry questions. We're dealing with geometry questions. In the previous section, we stopped at question number nine. So now we are continuing with question number 10. So here it goes. How many lines of symmetry are here? Now, to be specific, if it was a circle alone, it would have been infinity. But because there is this line here, now this makes it to have only two lines of symmetry. Why? Because one line uh, will pass vertically there, and another line will pass horizontally there. So we shall get two lines of symmetry. Okay, we go to question number 11. Shed one box so that we have only one line of symmetry. Okay, we shed one box so that we have only one line of symmetry. Now here we have two options. Uh, you could either shed here, because once you shed here, means your line, your only one line will pass there. But another person, could shed somewhere else. Okay, another person could be shed here. And then our line could be passing there. So this is one option and this is the second option. So those are the two possible options where you can shed and you remain with only one line of symmetry. Number 12, does this shape have rotational symmetry? The answer is no. It does not have rotation symmetry. Why? Okay. If you look this side and this side, they're not the same. And this side is not the same. So this means uh, this one will have, this has only one order of rotation. Okay, and according to the theory, To have rotation, you must have more than one order. To have rotation symmetry. To have rotation symmetry, you must have more than one order. It must be more than one order. So this one has only one order. So if there's only one order, so it doesn't have rotational symmetry. Simple, clear. But if you have got order two, order three, order four of rotation, then yes, there will be rotational symmetry. You have to understand between rotational symmetry and order of rotation. Order of rotation is how many times you regain your original look as you move around. But rotational symmetry is a shape that has got more than one order of rotation. Okay, now number 13. So here we have got two shapes. We have got a smaller shape here, triangle, that has got Y, uh, 12 and seven. And then we have got a bigger triangle there that has got Y plus five. And then here, 12 plus X, and then there are 10, right? So if we write the formula, it will be Y plus five over one. 10 over 7, 12 plus x over 12. So we take pairs and we work out. So you can begin maybe with this pair. So you will get um, 7y plus 35 is equal to 10y. So that means 35 will be equal to 3y. So divide by 3, divide by 3. Then we shall get 35 divided by 3, and that is 11.7. So y is 11.7. Then we shall do the same for x. x now we shall take this until this side. So 10 times 12, we shall get 120. And then seven times 12, we shall get 84. We shall get 84 plus seven x. So we shall take 84 and we subtract it from 120 and 20, 
then we shall get 36 is equal to 7x. We shall get 36 is equal to 7x. Then after that, um, after that, we divide by 7. So 36 divided by 7, we shall get 5.14. We shall get 5.14. Okay. So this is how we find A and X. But remember, I did not write for you the formula. Remember the formula we always say, A over small A is equal to B over small B is equal to C over small C. But you have a choice. You can even say, a over A is equal to B over B is equal to small c over big c. But remember, whenever you keep the capital letters up, all of them should be up. And when you keep the capital letters down, all of them should be down. And then you continue working, you get to the same the answer. Right. Number 14. We have got two triangles again. We have got the big triangle. I'm writing it there. Here. With a neutral corner here. And here we have nine, here we have y plus five, and here we have x, that's a bigger triangle. And then we have got the smaller triangle with the neutral corner there. Here we have seven, here we have five, and here we have x. But remember, both of these, they're sharing this corner. So it means this is another second multi corner. All right, then I use the previous formula, this one here of capital A over small a. So I'll take y plus five over x. And then it will be equal to nine over seven. Okay, and then it will be x over x over uh, five. So first I can find x using these two. So I will do nine times five, nine times five, I get 45. Then 45 I will divide by seven. I get six point. So my x will be uh, 6.43. Okay, then I use these two to find y. But remember I have y plus five over x and my x is 6.43 is equal to nine over seven, okay. So I'll get 6.43 times nine. Then I divide it by seven. Uh, now I will be having y plus five is equal to 8.27. Then I'll take five this side to subtract. Then I will minus five. And my answer will be 3.27. So this is how we solve number 14. Right, we go to number 15. Okay, number 15, we have two formulas. I can see we have area and volume. So we know area one over area two is equal to K squared. At the same time, volume one over volume two is equal to K cube. So if you check properly, area is complete. So I keep, 80 over 20 is equal to K squared. This gives me four is equal to K squared. And when I square root, my K is two. After getting K is two, I substitute K on the volume part. Right, so this side I have V over the volume of small is 74 is equal to the K, I have got it as two for three. So that means I have 74 is equal to Two power three is eight. So my volume will be eight times 74. Eight times 74, and that is five, nine, three. Five, nine, two. That is meter, meter cube. So remember to how to apply these two formulas properly. If we are given volume and volume, we use this one. But if we are given, uh, we are given area and length, if we are given area and length, we shall use um, area one over area two is equal to length one over length two squared. And also if you are given uh, volume and length, 
we shall use volume one over volume two is equal to length one over length two cubed. That is when you are given area and length or volume and length. But for this case, we are, not, we are given area and volume together. So we have to use these two. Okay, we go to number 16. Find X, okay, in order to find X because X is our center. So first we need to use um, cyclic quadrato rule. And for cyclic quadrato rule, it will tell us this is 50. Why? Because they make 180. And then if this is 50, we use the angle at the center is twice angle circumference. So if angle at the center is twice angle circumference, means this center here will be 100. Finally, our X will be 100. Right, we go to number 17. Remember, radius and tangent form 90, radius and tangent form 90. And if you look at this shape, this is one corner, second corner, third corner, and fourth corner. So this is a quadrato, and the quadrato will add it to 360. So that means 4X plus X plus 90 plus 90 is equal to 360. But these two 90s will subtract 360 and we shall remain with 4X plus X, it should be always 180 degrees, always. So now we conclude. These two angles here will always make us 180 because this 90 and this 90, we remove that 180 from the 360. So now I have 5X is equal to 180. So divide by five, divide my five. So I get 180, I divide by five, and I get my X as 36 degrees. Right, we go to question number 18. I'm given angle 20. It means even this part here will be 20. So to complete the triangle, this will be 140. Why? Because the triangle is 180 degrees. So if this is 140 at the center, then at the circumference, it will be half. So I mean this side, it will be 70. So if that is 70, now it means 70 plus X, I should get 180. So X will be 110 degrees. But at the same time, remember, if that is 70, even this angle here will be 70. And because this radius, this tangent and this tangent, by law, they are equal, meaning even this part here will be 70. Hence, we shall have 70 plus 70 plus y is equal to 180. So 140 plus y is equal to 180. Then we subtract and we get y as 40 degrees. Number 19, name the shapes of the following nets. Okay, this is a triangular prism. Triangular prism because when you join it you'll get something like this and that's a triangular prism and this one is a closed cone why closed cone because this one is the curve part and then there is that circle which is drawn this which will represent the base that's a closed cone and then the c part this is open cylinder. It's in fact one side open cylinder. Not completely open. This is one side open cylinder. It's like the top is open, but the bottom is closed. So it's like this part here is open, but bottom is closed. A complete open cylinder um, would look just like a rectangle. So when it is like that, it means this side, there is no circle, and this side, there is no circle. All right. That has been our work for today. Thank you for your attendance. My name is Mr. Shingoma.